Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this video is continue to take a look at the powerful CAD system called Solid Design provided by 1CNC. Now in this video, we're going to create some wireframe geometry, we're going to create some dimensions, we'll also create some solid models, we'll take a look at hybrid modeling as well. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the space bar on the keyboard and select top view. Here's our X axis and there's our Y axis and there's our X0, Y0, Z0. I'm going to pan up to the left just a little bit. Let's start with wireframe geometry. So I'm going to grab our line tool set there. I'm going to use the default which is line. I'm going to use coordinate input. You can use incremental or absolute. I'm going to use the default of X0, Y0, Z0 for the beginning of the line. So all I'm going to do is just hit the enter key three times and that verifies that point in the upper left hand corner of the screen there. Now I'm going to go to X of five inches and again I'm just using the enter key on the keyboard. Let's go minus three on this. Now let's go to X of three inches. Oh, I minus 5. How about x0? Let's go back up to y0 and when we're finished we can right hand mouse click. Now I created this geometry in a consecutive fashion but you don't have to do that. You can create your lines in any order that you'd like and there's also a complete suite of trimming tools you can use as well if you'd like to do that. Let's take a look now at some of the dynamic features within 1CNC. Let's head over to our chamfer tool. So again I went into our line set of tools. We're going to select chamfer. Now I'm going to go with two inches for this. I'm going to left click that line and as I hover over this one we get a nice preview. If I hover over the right vertical line we get a preview there. I can also come over here and type in a different value and 1CNC will dynamically update the preview. So it's very powerful. So I'm going to left click that. That looks good and I'll right hand mouse click. Let's put a fillet in down here. So we're going to go over to our circle tools and here's our fillet command. I'm going to type in 0.75 but I should point out that anytime within solid design where you're entering a value into a field you can type in a formula. So for example I could type in 3 divided by 4 and if I hit the equal sign on the keyboard it'll convert that and show us the result there. So that looks good. This works the same way. You left click and I can get a preview here and a preview on the other side. You can also come over here and dynamically put in whatever value you'd like and you'll get a preview for that as well. I'm going to put that back to 0.75. I'm going to say that looks good. Left click and when I'm done I'm going to right hand mouse click. Let's create a circle now. Let's make this an inch and a half and I'm going to use coordinate input for this. I'm going to put this at x 1.5 and for the Y value, I'm going to use the enter key on the keyboard. We're going to put that in at minus 1.5. That looks good. And when we're done, we can just right hand mouse click. Okay, so that's it for creating some simple wireframe geometry. Don't forget, you can always grid point snap. Here's an example of grid point snapping. Uh, you can also entity digitize. Here's an example of grabbing some entities. You can grab midpoints. You can grab arc centers. You can grab the midpoints of arcs quadrants of arcs. We can grab that quadrant and move it up to there. And you can also free digitize which means you can just place the geometry where your cursor is. Let's undo that. I'm just hitting control Z on the keyboard. And let's take a look now at creating some dimensions. Now I think also at the same time I want to demonstrate using layers also. Do you have to use layers with dimensions? Absolutely not. But let's let's demonstrate a couple of things at the same time here. I'm going to right hand mouse click within the layer browser. I'm going to select add layer and that's going to be this layer 2 here. I'm going to double click on that and that's just so I can give it a different name. I'm going to call that DIM for abbreviation for dimensions and we'll click OK. And so now any dimension I create now is going to be placed on that layer. So here's your dimension tools. Why don't we start with horizontal dimension and all I'm doing is I'm just left hand mouse clicking where I want to place that dimension lines. Let's do it again for vertical. I'm going to just left click, left click, take my cursor and then left click very very easy to do. Let's make another dimension right there. How about a radius dimension? Let's grab that and maybe place that right there. And how about a diametrical? So let's head up there and we'll place that just like that. So there's also tools for creating things like cross hatching. So for example if I select all the blue geometry, let's select by color. I'm going to select all the blue ge geometry. We'll head now to our cross hatch. And then with this you can select any type of material that you'd like. I'm going to stick with the iron. You can specify the spacing if you want to and the angle. I'm going to click OK to that and you can see there's the cross hatch. 
Now because I used this layer here called dim, everything I created on that layer is placed there. Of course we could have named this anything we wanted, I just used dim for that. Okay, so there's an example of creating some quick dimensions on a part. Don't forget there's also tools here for creating text. You have complete control over the text font style and also within dimensioning, same thing. Uh, complete control over the text, the font style, arrow style, and things like that. Let's take a look now at some solid modeling. I'm going to head over here to the left and let's go into our extrude tools. Let's start with extrude curves. I'm going to grab that and then left hand mouse click that closed boundary and then right hand click. As soon as I do that I can extrude this in any direction that I want. Notice under height this is snapping to imperial units. That's because my system is set up to imperial but if I was set up in metric this would be snapping to metric values. You can also type in a value if you want. For example we could type in minus 0.8. If that looks good we can just left hand mouse click and there you go there's the extrusion. Now if you want you can extrude multiple closed boundaries. We could grab both those shapes. I'm just going to drag this down to right there to demonstrate that. That looks good. Let's undo that. You can also if you want to of course add a chamfer. Why don't we put in 12 degrees for that. I'm going to left click the outside boundary and again you can type in a height or you can just take your cursor and left hand mouse click to create that. So that's very very fast. Okay let's just take our extrude curves grab that outside shape and I'm going to get rid of the taper. And notice how that dynamically updates and I'm just going to snap that down to minus one inch and say that looks good. Now let's use our extrude cut command. So with extrude cut I could grab that closed boundary and again we can put in a taper value, type in a distance or just simply pull it down and left click and it will cut all the way through the model. Let's give you another demonstration of extrude cut. I'm going to just create a shape here. Maybe something that looks like this. Notice how one CNC is always referencing off of existing geometry. That's what those dashed lines are all about. I'm going to take that now and use that closed boundary for an extrude cut. I'm going to left click and I'm going to pull that down to how about minus 0.75. That looks very good. So that's extrude cut. Now let's take a look at the extrude boss command. I'm going to change my view to a top view. I just hit the space bar by the way to get into the top view. And I'm just going to sketch some more geometry here. I'm just grid point snapping. Don't forget you can always use coordinate input. I'm just grid point snapping to speed the video up a little bit here. Let's go to our trim tools. Let's demonstrate how to use some trim functions. How about trim 2? So all I'm doing is I'm just trimming those edges, that blue geometry. And all you do is you select the portion of the geometry you want to save and then right hand mouse click. So there's a, a good example of trim 2. Now let's use our extrude boss command. So extrude boss, I'm going to grab that shape. This works exactly like the previous commands. I'm going to come up, I could put in a value, but I'm just going to snap up to 0.75. You can also put in a taper value if you want. Now that's actually one solid model. In fact, if we were to select all the blue geometry and hit the delete key on the keyboard, you can see now as I rotate around, this is one shape right here. In fact, if we want to, we could put a how about we put a fillet on that and let's make that how about 125 thousandths. We'll click OK and just digitize the edges that you want to place the fillet on and right hand click and there's the fillet. So if this were two separate solid models you wouldn't get a fillet between there but because the extrude boss keeps one solid model you're in good shape. OK. All right let's take it a step further and why don't we demonstrate chamfer tool. Let's put a chamfer tool here. Notice how the model turns translucent so I don't have to rotate it to get in there and grab those other shapes. I'm going to say that looks good. All right before we wrap this video up let's take a look at some hybrid modeling. What I'm going to do is this. I am going to use our extract edges tool. Let's use extract. Let's use this option right here called extract an edge. I'm going to left click and left click that edge and then one CNC instantly creates this wireframe geometry. I'm also going to go into the line tool and notice how we can snap the vertices right on the solid model to create that. That looks very good. And now we're going to go into our extrude curves command. I'm going to grab that triangle I just created and I am going to extrude that. I'm just going to eyeball it just right about there. All right. So at the moment those are two individual solids. Let's get rid of that blue geometry. And by the way, you don't have to keep deleting your your wireframe geometry. I just do that out of habit as just like a good housekeeping thing. So I'm going to delete that by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. But I have two separate solid models here. Now you could take that into manufacture and you could manufacture that using our CAM system if you want to. 
but I want to show you how if you'd like you can actually combine these two using some hybrid modeling. I'm going to select that solid model and that solid model. We're going to head over here to our hybrid tools and I'm going to use this option called Union. What that's done now is that's taken both those solid models and it's joined them together into one solid. Now to demonstrate that we're going to quickly head back over here to our fillet command and why don't we put in a small value, how about 60 thousandths for that and I'm just going to grab these three edges and then right hand click and there's the fillet. So if those were two separate solid models you wouldn't get that. So there's a quick overview of some hybrid modeling. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.